Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. Steve Bamford here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. This week we are covering the American Express on the PGA Tour. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gambler aware. You can visit begambleraware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. Two events this week. DP World Tour restarts with the Abu Dhabi HSBC Championship. We've also got the American Express on the PGA Tour. We have predictor models completely free of charge for both events. We've got tournament statistics for both events. We've got a whole suite of stats of vet, you know, effectively for you guys. I will put a link through. I love the strokes gain stats that we do. Uh, we've got them this week on the American Express. So go back to 2016. In this week's field over in America, who's performed best on the host uh, PGA West Stadium course? All that information is there completely free of charge for you with incoming form charts. Oh, it's just all there. So come and use it. Golf Betting System is the website for you. What do I need from you guys? Don't forget, this show and the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel. It's all about you guys. Like the video. If you don't like the video, YouTube won't show it. They won't highlight it within any of their Google algorithms either. So if I search golf betting tips, I won't appear unless you like the video. Because if you're not liking the video, Google thinks or YouTube thinks or both of them think, it's the same company, um, that you don't like the content. So please like the video, that's essential. Subscribe to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel. If you're new, I do a show each and every week for the PGA Tour, and that's going to become bigger and bigger and bigger as we build up. I know it's cold here in the UK this morning. It's minus six. But as we build up to the Masters, the momentum builds. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You also catch on here the Golf Betting System podcast, which I've just recorded with Paul Williams and Barry O'Hanrahan. You can listen to that on this YouTube channel. And on top of all that, of course, you have... Um, it would be fantastic if uh, you let me know exactly who you are backing this week at the American Express. Right. Complicated old tournament, this. The American Express. Um... American Express, you walk into a restaurant, you go and play with it. Oh, we don't take American Express. Yes, that's happened a few times. But they are the title sponsor of this. I know this as the Bob Hope Lottery. The Bob Hope Classic, it's a pro-am, 156 players. I've got to say the field this year is the best I have ever seen. It's a three-course rotation. Um... It's unique on that. It's a pro-am. The PGA West facility hosts three of the four rounds. That's in La Quinta, or Palm Springs, California. We've got the Pete Dye Stadium course, which is the host course. That hosts 36 of the 72 holes. We've then got two other courses. Within the PGA West complex, they play the tournament course, which is a Jack Nicklaus design. 7,147 yards. It's a par 72. And they also then go off the property. I think it's three or four miles down the road. La Quinta. La Quinta Country Club. That again is a par 72. That is 7,060 yards. If you look at difficulty, La Quinta tends to play easiest when there's no wind involved. La Quinta the easiest. Tournament course. The hardest is the Pete Dye Stadium course. But when I say that, Looking at last year, difficulty ranks. Um, Pete Dye was the 37th most difficult of 50 courses, so I think that makes it the 14th easiest. Um, tournament course was the 11th easiest on the tour, the Jack Nicholas design. And La Quinta was the 8th easiest course on the PGA Tour. Yes, we are looking at kind of Astrodome golf this week. There was a little bit of rain Sunday night into Monday morning here in La Quinta. 
course is going to be soft enough, lush, greens, receptive, very little wind in the forecast. Now, if we look at the um, Peak Dyer Stadium course, these greens, they're 5,000 square feet on average. They feature Tiff Dwarf Bermuda grass. They have the traditional January Poa Trivialis Overseed. Uh, that course has been slightly extended. 7,187 yards, it's a par 72. Seven of the holes feature water in play. Tournament course, 7,147 yards, par 72. Again, those greens there are Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. Again, with that Poa Trivialis overseed. And the greens at La Quinta are Poa Trivialis with ryegrass overseed. So it's all overseeded um, greens. That golf course is a 7,060-yard par 72, as I said. If you're looking for courses that cross over... The host course is a peat dye design, clearly. Austin Country Club, excellent. Crooked Stick, they played the 2012-2016 BMW Championships there. Harbour Town Golf Links, every year the RBC Heritage. The Ocean Course at Kiara Island, 2012-2021 PGA Championships. TPC River Highlands, they play that every year, The Travellers. TPC Louisiana, they played a team event there, the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. And the most famous of them all, TPC Sawgrass, the Players' Championship. There's also Whistling Straits, 2010-2015 PGA Championship. If you're looking for Jack Nicklaus designs, um, Glen Abbey, they used to play the RBC Canadian Open there, 2008, 2013, 2015, 2018. Montreux Golf and Country Club. That's where they used to play the Barracuda 2019 forward. Um, they also play the Barracuda now at Old Greenwood Golf Club. So basically any Barracuda form is a Jack Nicklaus design. Um, PJ National, the Honda Classic. And of course, the big daddy of them all, the Memorial Tournament, which they play at the Jack Nicklaus um, design. Which I cannot... Oh, God can't believe see this is the trouble of getting old you start to forget stuff muirfield village muirfield village golf club that is the main jack nicholas design his host course okay in terms of fairway widths we are looking at 26 yards at 300 yard carry that compares to 34 yards wide last week at wireline so eight yard wide thinner Fairways this week on the Pete Dye Stadium course. Weather cold. Can you believe it? I'm seeing 14 degrees Celsius, and it warms. Um, I've seen. I'm seeing 11 degrees on the Thursday, and then for the rest of the tournament, 14 to 16 degrees. That's cold for the PGA Tour. Um, I don't think it's going to affect too much because it's a short golf course. I'm sure you'll read, oh, the ball wasn't going anywhere, you know, for the morning starters. So all I will say, for um, the early starters, bogeys, keep the bogeys off the card. There are going to be bogeys for those early morning starters. Um, so keeping your card clean and just as it starts to heat up, you can fill your boots on these golf courses. You really can fill your boots. Now, winning scores here, 23 under par Hudson, Hudson Swafford. He's a two-time winner here. Siwoo Kim, 23 under. Andrew Landry, 26 under. Adam Long, 26 under. Yeah, you are, your, your ears aren't deceiving you. Hudson Swafford, Siwoo Kim, Andrew Landry, Adam Long. John Rahm, 22 under par. Adam Long was 26 under par, as was Andrew Landry. 2017, Hudson Swafford, 20 under par. Jason Duffner, 20 Five under par. World ranking. I mentioned this in the in the video last week. Why not? World rankings. Swafford one sixty six. Siwoo Kim ninety six. Landry two forty. Long four seventeen. Ram number three. Hudson Swafford two hundred and four. Uh, Paul Williams again on the uh, golf bank system podcast has put up John Ram. 
at seven to one, he basically says that if you ran this event six or seven times, John Rahm would win at least one of them. And I can see the logic. I can see why he's the favourite. He's been backed into six to one this morning over here in the UK. So cold, dry, uh, not a lot of wind. It's going to be low scoring. Key player skills required. Now, we have to be careful this week as well because it's a four uh, three-course rotor. Uh, strokes gained are only taken, of course, on the stadium course, which is basically, we're only seeing data for 36 of the 72 holes. Strokes gained off the tee, 19th. That is considerably more important than what we saw at the Sony last week where it was 28th. These are average ranks for winners going back to 2016 at Jason Duffner. So 19th off the tee. Strokes gained on approach, 16th. Strokes gained around the green, 39th. Of no importance whatsoever. Strokes gained tee to green, 16th. That's six points lower than what we saw last week at the Sony Open. Strokes gained putting, 16th. Which again, is considerably less than what we saw at the Sony. But this data is pretty incomplete. I'm not sure it tells you a great deal. Hudson Swafford last year. Strokes gained off the tee was 45th. Strokes gained on approach, 4th. Strokes gained around the green, 25th. Tee to green, 11th. Putting 2nd. Siwoo Kim. Strokes gained off the tee, 10th. Strokes gained on approach, 2nd. Uh, strokes gained around the green 16th, strokes gained tee to green 1st, strokes gained putting 8th. I will say that the last three winners, Landry, Siwoo Kim, Hudson Swafford, have ranked 9th, 2nd and 4th for strokes gained on approach. So when we go to the 8 tournament statistics for strokes gained later on in the video, strokes gained approach, important. Now, actually, that rings a bell. We had Siwoo Kim win last week, didn't we? Good old Siwoo Kim. I'm never on him when he wins. Four victories, all on Bermuda grass, all on short courses. I've never had one of those wins. Siwoo Kim last week ranked 13th, tied with Tom Hoagie in my eight tournament trackers for strokes gained on approach. He also ranked 14th for strokes gained T2 green. Got nowhere near him. Ah, golf betting, you've got to love it. Right. Predictor model top 10. I use the predictor model at golf betting system completely free of charge as part of my research. Now, this week I used top 10s on this golf course. I used average score on this golf course. I used, um, over the last five years, performances on short golf courses, performances on to uh, at tournaments where the scoring is very low, resort scoring, uh, performances on Bermuda grass greens that are overseeded, also performances out west on the West Coast Swing. All of this data completely available. I also put a very good ranking, strong ranking on strokes gained on approach, strokes gained T to green, and also putting conversion, which in our predictor model is putts per greens in regulation. Came out with this top 10. Best bookmaker this week. I haven't mentioned them before, but Bet Victor are now five places each way at court the odds. The old traditional each way odds. The same now that you find at Bet Fred, um, but they are excellent now on prices. They are market leading on lots of players this week. So Bet Victor might be worthwhile adding to your portfolio. I'm going to keep an eye on their prices moving forward. And of course, if this sticks, we'll mention it week in, week out. If you open up an account with Bet Victor via a golf betting system, our website, you will receive their Bet Ten Pounds get. £40 in free bets and bonuses. New customer welcome offer for those of you 18 plus. It's an excellent offer. But yes, very, very strong on prices. And let's hope that's something that stays for Bet Victor. Also, Bet365, eight places each way. 
available via their each way extra facility you can go up to 12 places each way but then i think they take it i think it's a ninth of the ninth the odds on the place what's the point so anyway you've got each way extra facility available via bet365 well worth a look basically those two are dominating this week on my top 10. these prices are live right now in the uk at 9 30 on the tuesday morning jason day 70 to 1 with bet 365 eight places each way available via the each way extra facility nine sung j m 22 to 1 with unibet they are six places each way this week a 50 odds if i mention each way places all the 50 odds eight is brian Harmon. they are standout bet 365 the only bookmaker currently at 35 to 1 on brian Harmon. Bet 365, again, eight places each way available on that price at e with our each way extra facility. Top seven. Seven is Scotty Scheffler. He is 11 to 1 with Bet Victor. Six is Will Zalatoris. He is 20 to 1 with Bet Victor. Five, last week's winner, Si Woo Kim. Si Woo Kim is 40 to 1 right now with Bet Victor, which is a Fantastic price on Si Woo Kim, who won here two years ago. He is as short as 25 to 1 right now with Skybet. Top four, Tony Finau. 14 to 1 available with Bet365. Eight places each way by their each way extra facility. Three is Tom Hoagie. Now, I have been on Tom Hoagie regularly at this golf course. He's great here. He's great at desert golf, especially the Shriners. Um... I've had him at 200 to 1 placed. Last year, had him at 125 to 1. <laughs> you won't be surprised to hear, finished second. This year, 40 to 1. Bet 365, eight places each way available via the each way extra facility. Two is the favourite, John Rahm. Backed in to 6 to 1 in this week's Birdie Fest with Bet 365, eight places each way via their each way extra facility. Number one, this guy apparently. Right here, right now. Might change if a couple of withdrawals. Both he and Scotty Scheffler can reach world number one with a win this week. Patrick Cantlay. Now, how that works with Cantlay, God only knows. But will it inspire? Will it de... Who knows? Patrick Cantlay is an 11 to 1 best price with Bet Victor right now. So we've got Cantlay 11 to 1 with Bet Victor. We've got John Rahm at 6 to 1 with Bet 365. Tom Hoagie 40 to one with bet365 all i'll say is i put a link in the description box come and use the predictor model it's free of charge spend 10 minutes with it why not so that's my top 10 of this week's predictor model rolling eight week stats strokes gained off the tee seems it's certainly more in play this week than it was last week there's something here about thin fairways Water in play. If you can hit it long and straight, that's an advantage this week in my mind. Also, these holes, not a lot of trees in play, so it's a lot more straightforward off the tee as opposed to last week with dog legs. Almost a, I know it sounds ridiculous it was in a while, but more of a Carolina golf course feel last week. Certainly an old style golf course. Here's the top 10, uh, sorry, top 12 last eight tournaments strokes gained off the tee. Full top 25s of all of these categories, which would have included Siwoo Kim last week, available on my pre, in my preview. The link is in the description box. Ten, uh, 12, Ben Griffin. Great young talent. Good on Bermuda grass. 11, Cameron Young. 10 is Joel Damon making his yearly debut this week. 9, MJ Daffy, the South African. Tie for 7th, John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler. Six is Will Gordon. He's been playing some outstanding golf. Five is Tony Fino. Do you think strokes going off the tee is important for world ranking? Throwing that out. Four, Kevin Yu. I know that Paul Williams has put him up on the podcast, playing some great golf, Yu. Three, Ricky Fowler. The return of Ricky. And number one, a tie. Taylor Pendrith, great driver with the golf ball. And Will, <coughs> Will Zalatoris. Sorry about the cough. Someone said on the video comments last week, you need to clear your cough before you do your video. If only it was that simple. 
Top 12 strokes gained on approach. 12. Ricky Fowler. A new renaissance. I'm interested in Fowler this week. Interested. I haven't backed him. Tie for ninth. Tom Hoagie, Martin Laird. Martin Laird's on the quiet side this week. Played brilliantly in the desert, Martin Laird. John Rahm. 8C Wu Kim. A tie for fourth. We've got Tom Kim. Won last time in the desert at the Shriners Open. Ben Taylor, who's been playing some outstanding golf for the Englishman. Cameron Young. And this Carl Yuan. What a player this guy is. Worthy of note, Carl Yuan, I think. Three, Russell Knox. My feelings are known. Tie for first. Tony Finau. And K.H. Lee. Backed him last week. Played okay. Likely to go well this week because I'm not on him. T's green. Top 12. 12 is Siwoo Kim. A tie for a 10th. Wyndham Clark. There's a name for you. Martin Laird again. Tie for 7th. Scotty Scheffler. Callum Tarran. Another Englishman. Cameron Young. A tie for 5th. KH Lee and Ben Taylor. 4th, Tom Kim. Three Tony Fina, a two Tony Fina tied with Ricky Fowler, number one, the very best in the world this week. Although the world rankings don't tell you that, John Rahm, and strokes gain total. Now I've mentioned this on previous videos. This includes my cover. It includes all of the tournaments abroad, including Bermuda, where there were not strokes gain metrics. Top twelve, Martin Laird. Why didn't I put him up? 11, Tony Fee now. A tie for ninth. Patrick Cantlay and Brian Harmon. 8, Aaron Wise. Sure to be popular. 7, Patrick Rogers. My thoughts are known. 5, Cameron Young tied with Scotty Scheffler. 3, here's one that was playing brilliant golf at the end of last year. The Belgian, Thomas Dietry. He's tied with Will Zalatoris. 2 is Joel Damon. Sick in terms of Tony uh, Thomas Dietrich and number one basically they both played great golf at the end of last year number one John Rahm <coughs> Rahm Damon Thomas Dietrich Will Zalatoris Cam Young Scotty Scheffler that's the top six okay historic odds are winners this is where I start laughing loudly Hudson Swafford last year 175 to 1 Tom Kim 66 to 1 Andrew Landry 200 to 1 uh, Adam Long, 600 to 1. John Rahm, 10 to 1. Hudson Swafford, 66 to 1. Jason Duffner, 40 to 1. So we've had a 40 to 1, two 66 to 1 winners and a 10 to 1 winner here over four of the last seven. Would that be one, two, three? Yeah. 10 to 1, 40 to 1, 66 to 1 and 60 to 1 winners across the last four of seven. And then wacky, 175 to 1. 200 to 1, 600 to 1. <laughs> the average here, going back to 2010 of this tournament, 141 to 1. I don't mind that. I, you know me if you watch me regularly. I like the 40, 66 kind of range. John Rahm is a great bet, clearly. Um, I can see Paul Williams with his point on John Rahm. Don't forget, though, would you rather back John Rahm at 6-1 to one to win this week or potentially 6-1 to one next week at the Farmers Insurance Open on a golf course where he's won and won the US Open? So that's two victories. I think I'd be on John Rahm next week personally at a non-birdie fest. But, you know, who knows? We will find out on Sunday. Um, my selections... And why not? I'm going to go in reverse order. Now, 300 to 1 is out there with a the firm. I have gone 250 to 1. Uh, a point each way. William Hill. Eight places each way. I do so. Uh, yeah. It's a birdie fest. So each way places for me is important. I like them. I've got David Lingmuth. He's back on the PGA Tour. After scratching around. Playing some PGA Tour. Not doing very well. Not doing very well. He basically didn't do any well for a number of years. 
Bear in mind, this guy used to be in the world's top 35. But he's one of those, isn't he? He's an old-style player, short off the tee. If the approach playing the putter doesn't work, David Lingman doesn't compete in modern professional golf. But of late, there's been a resurgence in Lingmouth. He's basically got full status again on the PGA Tour. He won the Nationwide Children's Hospital Open, which is one of the... Um, Championship, which is always one of the better tournaments on the Corn Ferry playoffs. <coughs> Excuse me. And then so far, 11th at Bermuda, short Bermuda grass. 8th at Mayakoba, short Paspalum. 10th at the RSM Classic, short Bermuda grass. Great. 250 to 1, 300 to 1 still available. Okay. <coughs> He's a winner. <clears throat> on Jack Nicholas's ultimate design at Muirfield Village. He won the 2015 Memorial Tournament. And then you look at Pete Dye Fall. He's had a third and a sixth at the Valley Course, which is next door, in, well, it's part of TPC Sawgrass Complex. And he's also played on the main course there and finished second in 2013 Players' Championship. I know it's a long time ago. To Tiger Woods. After all, he's 250 to 1. And then he's also had two second places in this tournament. He, When he was on the old rotor, where they used to have the Palmer course, the Nicholas course, and I think it was La Quinta. Finished second in that. Lost in the playoff. Uh, that playoff loss was to Brian Gay with Charles Howe the third in it. And then when they first moved to this rotor, so stadium course, tournament course, Nicholas, La Quinta, he was second again. That time, he lost to Jason Duffner in a playoff. Six from six here on his starts. He's earned a cool $1.22 million on this golf course. 250 to one for a guy that comes in off of 13th. Yeah. And, uh, sorry, 11th, 8th, 10th, missed cut. I'm taking that 250 to one on the US domiciled Swede. David Lingmouth. <clears throat> All places are in play this week. I'm coming back to Earth though. JT Poston. I got 70 to 1 on JT Poston, who for me is the kind of player that would win this golf tournament at this kind of 66 to 1 price point. Bearing in mind we've had 66 to 1 winners here in Si Wu Kim. <coughs> and we also had Hudson Swafford win here at 66 to 1 on this rotor. I got 70 to 1 with William Hill eight places each way. <coughs> I'm JT Poston. <coughs> I do apologise. Um a two-time winner on the PGA Tour. Poston's wins have come at 22 under par and 21 under par. Those were at the 2019 Wyndham 2022 John Deere Classic. Now, winning at TPC Deere Run was part of a best ever year for the St. Simons Island Georgia resident, where he actually made the Tour Championship last year for the first time ever. Both of those are aforementioned top threes came at Pete Dye Designs. I don't know what that means. Third at Harper Town in April, featuring a closing 60. Oh, yes, sorry. He basically um, he had a couple of top three finishes last year prior to qualifying for the Tour Championship. So they came at Pete Dye Designs, yes. Third at Harper Town in April. And second at TPC River Highlands. I write all of this stuff. Most of it makes no sense until you actually read it properly. So he's second at TPC River Highlands and third at Harpertown last year on Peak Dye Designs. Thank you very much. He actually shot a 62 and a closing 64 at TPC River Highlands. A deep dive into Poston's die record highlights. Additional sixth and eighth uh, spot finishes at Harpertown. Allied to a seventh place here in 2019 at PGA West, which he then backed up with 25th place here last year. Now, I just threw this out there on the podcast. That 25th place last year came off a of form of 42nd at the Sony, 
miska, 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 miska. Wasn't playing great. Finished 25th here 12 months ago. Let's move it on. End of last year. 20th at the Shriners. 21st at the RSM Classic. 21st this year, two weeks ago at the Century. 20th last week at the Sony Open. I like JT Poston this week. I like JT Poston. 70 to 1, 8 places each way, 50 odds with William Hill. Next up, an absolute desert golf course bandit. In my terminology, I call them desert rats. Adam Hadwin, 10th, 4th, 6th and 10th at TPC Summerlin, where they play the Shriners. He's had a couple of top 17 results, 17th and 12th at TPC Scottsdale. That is more pure ball striking. Here at PGA West, 6th in 2016, 3rd in 2018, 2nd in 2019. He won the 2010 Desert Dunes Classic, which they play or used to play on the Canadian tour at the Desert Dunes Golf Club, which is in Palm Springs. So he's won in this location. He's got a great record at this golf course. And he finished last year very, very strong. Tenth at the Shrine is open in October. My eye was taken by seventh last time out at the Houston Open, which they play at Memorial Park. Um, that, to me... Is a tough golf course, too long for him, too low, too high scoring. However, 13th, 2nd and 2nd for strokes gained off the tee on approach and from tee to green in Houston. That translated to 6th for total driving, 2nd for total accuracy and 4th for ball striking. He was also 2nd for greens in regulation last time out in Houston. Has done the gap, came here and contended. So the fact that he didn't play Sony last yeah, I don't think it's the be-all and end-all, especially at 60 to 1 with bet 365, eight places each way. If he grabs a top eight finish, I'm happy at 60 to 1. Another one, 55 to 1 on Saheed Tigala. Now, Tigala was with bet 365, eight places each way at 50 odds. Vegas has won here as a uh, Vegas has won here for the first time to a maiden. Adam Long did exactly the same at 600 to 1. 55 to 1 on Sahith Tagala to win his first PGA tournament. I like that. He's 25 year old. He comes from California. In fact, he went to Pepperdine Uni. Um, when you look into it, he, he grew up in Orange, Orange um, in California, about an hour's drive from this golf course. So he knows this area very, very well. He's now in the world's top 50. He qualified for both the Tour Championship last year as a rookie, and he then produced three top six performances to ease himself into the world's top 50 by year end. So he's got his Masters invite. Talented, talented lad. He makes bundles of birdies. He can shoot particularly low scores. He's had a 14th and a 6th in California at the um, Safeway Open, played at Silverado. The one that really took my mind, if cast your mind back, Super Bowl Sunday last year over at the Waste Management Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale, he went into that leading the event. 66, 64, 69. He was neck and neck with the likes of Brooks Kepka, Scotty Scheffler, Patrick Cantley and Xander Schofle. And he still finished third. He likes desert golf. He likes... He grew up in these kind of environs, climbs, knows the grasses. I'm all over him like a rash this week. He shot a 10 under 62 on the PGA West Nicholas tournament course in this last year. He went into Sunday in 11th spot. Very inexperienced PGA Tour player. 12 months on. If he's in the same spot this time or better, would not be surprised. Sahith Tagala, a point each way, 55 to 1, 8 place each way. We bet 365. Talented Australian up next, 50 to 1. Cam Davis, bet 365, 8 places each way, 50 odds. Plays well, birdie fest, plays well on Pete Dye designs. He was a hard charging third here in 2021. Um, he shot 14 under 130 strikes over the weekend which was only beaten that year by Patrick Cantley. The Australian shooting a 20-under total that week 
two years ago. That was three shots shy of Siwoo Kim. Sixth last July at the Barracuda Championship, which they play at Old Greenwood. We mentioned that earlier, the Jack Nicklaus design. Backed up the fact that Davis likes desert golf setups, especially those in California. He's also no slouch on peak die designs, backing up his third place here at PGA West with third at Harbour Town last year behind Jordan Spieth. Six after 36 holes at the Shriners Open. He eventually finished 37th. 13th at the high profile CJ Cup was a decent enough outing, although Davis again was on the pace at halfway. This is the point. He's been showing signs, Cameron Davis. He then went out to Australia. Seventh at the Australian PGA Championship. Missed the cut at the Australian Open. Won the Sand Belt Invitational. Played across four different courses. That must have boosted his confidence. I know it's low level, but he's won a golf tournament. 31st last week at the Sony Open. Second for strokes gain off the tee. Tenth for strokes gain tee to green. Love Cam Davis. The bookmakers... They don't give you a lot of value on Davis. 50 to 1, I thought, was a backable price with Bet365. Finally, in a tournament where only John Rahm has won this at a reasonable price, 10 to 1. I remember Bill Haas, 30 to 1, a few years ago on the old rotor. Cameron Young. We went through those strokes gained over the last eight tournament um, categories. Cam Young was in all of them. A fantastic player, a guy that has still not won on the PGA Tour, despite in his rookie season finishing third at the PGA Championship, second at the British Open, the Open Championship at St Andrews. This guy, though, you just look at his record, um, he just shoots low, low totals. A 64 at Torrey Pines, 62 at Riviera. 63 at Harbour Town. These are crazily difficult golf courses and he's shooting 62s and 63s. 64 at St Andrews in a major. 63 at the Detroit Golf Club. I was on him that week. He finished second. He does like a second place, but that's going to change. Um, second at the Sanderson Farms last season. Third at the Heritage of Pete Dye Design. Um, second at the Wells Fargo Championship and second at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Qualified for the President's Cup in Team USA. The next job on this guy's agenda is winning a PGA Tour title. I think this week, next week, and at Phoenix, very much in play. If he disappoints us this week, I'm keeping or watching brief. 12 months ago here, the only time he's played this golf tournament, he shot an opening round 64 at La Quinta. He was third after 36 and fifth after 54 holes. 77 in the final round. You had to scroll all the way down to 40th to find him. But that wasn't really what happened at this tournament for Cam Young. 12 months on, if he's in the same kind of spot come Sunday, you could see him being there on the back nine. So there's a, there are my six for the Bob Hope Lottery, the American Express. Cameron Young. I've got Cam Davis, Sahith Tigala, Adam Hadwin, JT Poston, and my 250 to 1 shot, who's still out there at 300 to 1 in a place, David Lingmuth. I love the American Express. Absolutely love it. One of my favourite tournaments of the year. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Apologies for my cough. Um, I know I should have cleared it for half an hour before I came on here to shoot it, but that's not life, is it? If you're still with us, Please throw us a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back here every week all the way up to the Masters. And of course, let me know in the comment section below who you are backing at the Bob Hope Lottery this week. It's been a blast. I'll see